Or are you stuck in the nostalgic, hesitant past? So, um, just a, a couple of things. Hey, November is coming up. I want to make, make sure if, uh, you knew a few things. Hey, we have this thing which is happening tonight, the, uh, the carnival. Please make sure uh, that you come. Now, uh, there was an announcement that said we need more chocolate bars. No, we got enough. We're all good as far as that's concerned, okay? Uh, but please, invite your friend, and not just another church friend. Invite someone from the community to be out. That's kind of what we're wanting to do. Uh, next week, we have Devoted Ministries. November 14th, we got Jeremy Martini, who is the president of Horizon Bible College. He's going to be here. You're not going to want to miss that. We're wanting to do a baptismal service on November the 28th. And so if you've not been baptized, then come and talk to me after the service or call the church. If you've not been baptized, and the reason that you haven't been baptized is because you don't want to get up in front of a bunch of people, then we are going to resolve that. I don't want you to not be baptized because you're afraid to be standing in front of people. And it's an important step. And so, so please, uh, if that is in any kind of interest to you, um, we have a couple uh, in our church who have been part of the church for a number of years. And, uh, and they have taken on membership, Callistus and Marianne Akenna. Can you stand up? Uh, we just are thankful for them. <laughs> Joining membership, they basically have been part of the, they have been part of the, 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 heartbeat of Bethel, and they have taken on, the, uh, when I asked them to take on the cultural liaisons, they are happy to do that, and have done some, so many great things, and, uh, and I, I could list all the things they are here, but we still, we're kind of limited for time, so God bless you, be with the Akenas, Lord, as they, uh, they uh, join the Bethel family in membership, and uh, let your hand be with them, we ask in Jesus' name, amen, amen. <laughs> so, it is always a tough time. I find it's always a tough time, especially uh, when someone has poured their life and soul into ministry and uh, just comes to be a time when thank you is not enough. And uh, all you can do is just, just uh, you know, express appreciation the best way that you possibly can. And, and so it's a sad time. It's an emotional time. There's, there's emotions of gratitude. There's emotions of sadness. And yet at the same time, as I have been in ministry for over 30 years, I've come to realize that it is a time of excitement. It's a time of excitement for Pastor Charles and, and Tricia. It's also a, a time of excitement for us as a congregation because I realize that God has hire, hardwired us to be able to seek new things. So my question is, as we come at this point, the question is this, are you ready for something new? Like I've come to realize something that has held me together in times like this, is that God knows what he is doing. He knows what he is doing in, in, in Charles' life. He knows what he's doing within the heartbeat of this church. And uh, this whole thing is a kingdom process. And I have harped on this probably a few times, and so if you've kind of heard to me tell this whole, all, then please bear with me, is that... The job of the body of Christ is not to hoard the talent of people, but to hone the talent of the people. And in doing so, if necessary, to release them on to bigger and better works or whatever. That's the kingdom of God. There's a couple of people in our congregation who are missionaries, and I could tell you who they were and where they're ministering to, but they're in what's called a restricted access nation. nation. So, so I don't want to mention their names, but they grew up in this church. Their parents attend this church. And... And um, there could have been a time where we have said, sat down with them and said, hey, you know, we're just so thankful for the gifts that were so evident in your life. But stop and consider the fact of where you got these gifts. And it would be good for you. And I know that you have this ambition to do that, but wouldn't it be nice if you were able to stay here? Wouldn't it be nice if you were able to kind of come and, and, and exercise your gifts in ministry here? Because we don't ever get to see the results of the ministry. We just kind of go off. Is, is that what you are? You know, what about us? But we don't do that. Could you imagine if we did that? What we are called to do as the body of Christ is to build people up and then send them, them off. And, and um, God blesses and honors that. And, uh, 
And I think that as a church, we need to be building and releasing pastors and missionaries. That should be our job. When we hire someone to serve the congregation, they do their best to serve the congregation, but equally we are called to serve them. They're not hired to do a job and we sit there and say, well, you didn't do that job well enough. And, and you know, if you could have done this, it was a little bit better. And then, and then sit back with our friends and say, well, they're doing an okay job and stuff like that. That's not what it's about. What we do is we allow people to come, we allow them to mature in their gifts, we allow them to make the mistakes that happen in through all of us, and we see them mature. And then when they mature and they get at that peak where all of a sudden they're able to do all these wonderful things, they go somewhere else. And we say this, as they grow and they become successful in ministry, we we have the opportunity as a congregation to say we had something to do with that. We were part of the process of God moving. And this is kingdom work. I was talking to Pastor Callan. He was talking about a church he's seeking to help who hasn't had a church, hasn't had a pastor for like over a year and a half. I begin to think, why is that? One of the reasons, probably are a number of reasons, but one of them is this, is that there are so many people who come into ministry for a small season and get beaten up so bad that they don't ever stay in ministry. And it's a terrible thing that, that as churches, I think our job is to build people up, to grow them, to develop them so that they become pastors of other churches. Our, our, our ideal is not to burn out people. Our ideal is not to burden them, but our idea is to build them up and to bless them. And I think when we do that, God does great things. But that leads us, whenever they do go on, to ask a question. Are you ready for something new. Like this is plastered throughout the scripture. The very first thing it says in scripture is that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He did something new. But it's not just there that we see it. How about that passage in 2 Corinthians uh, 5.17? It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And then there's that passage, which is in Lamentations. And I think I have that. Yeah, Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. You probably have sung this, this, this scripture. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. I like the Isaiah chapter 43 passage of scripture which talks about new, newness. It says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness, streams in the wasteland. And even the very last chapter of the Bible, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 5, it says this, Behold, I make all things new. The very first page of the Bible talks about Jesus, or Christ doing, or God doing something new. The very last is God saying, Behold, I make all things new. And so... God is a God who seeks to do something new. He does. He does it in our lives. He does it in our congregation. He does it because he's a continually creative God. And I believe that God does it because if he doesn't, then we get lethargic and we get complacent and we get planted and we get overly sentimental of the past and and nothing gets done. And I think God desires to do new things because it requires faith for you and me. It requires us to somehow make a decision to step out. And that's an important thing for us to understand. But we folks don't necessarily like the new. Sometimes we like to hold on to the old. We have trouble leaving the old because we get attached to the old and we get familiar with the old and it's predictable and it's controllable and we get fond of the old. Oh, as I look back, I got such fond memories, such wonderful things that have happened. There's no memory to new. New is kind of scary. New is unpredictable. Oh, I like the memories. I love the memories. I'm so fond of it. And here's the thing, though. Staying in the old requires no or little faith. It just requires us to maintain. It doesn't require us to depend on God. Why are we trying to do this? And sometimes we want to carry the old with us. I'm ready to come to the new, but if I could just carry the old with me, Everything I think would be okay. What happens is we never ever leave the old. We get stuck in the old. And this is independent or irrelevant of age. I have met some very 
old young people. Have you? I've met some very young old people. You know, people who are willing to embrace the new. And it's all dependent upon that. You become old when you stop embracing the new things that God has for us. And so that's an important thing. So what we do today is we, we acknowledge, we celebrate the past. It's good to do that. And we experience the present. There are so many people who never experience the present. They are either in the past or they are in the future. So today we experience it. We enjoy it. We celebrate this time together. But then we look forward to what God is doing in the future. We prepare ourselves. We anticipate what God wants us to do. And this is all prefaced with this huge question that I have for you today. And it is this. Are you ready to see God do something new? Or are you stuck in the nostalgic, hesitant past? Are you stuck? Are you resistant? What's the new thing God has called you to? What's the new horizon? What's the new challenge? Maybe it's a door of opportunity that has all of a sudden come upon you. Maybe it is a terrible circumstance which has happened to you. You're going through the worst time in your life. Everything's been taken away from you. And for some reason, there's an opportunity. For some reason, God is opening a door through the tragedy that you are going through. Maybe it's just the stop sign. Maybe it's a prompting of the Holy Spirit. God is somehow putting an ache on you to do something, some type of change. Maybe you just realize that you have gotten old. You've just sat down on your, che- on your, your, your Chesterfield after vacuuming that shag carpet of yours with that Kirby barbecue, looking at the paneling on the wall that you put up in the 1970s, and you sat there and said, you know what? Maybe it's time for something new. Maybe. Maybe it's a dream you can't shake. Ever have that? Oh, that's crazy. Why would I think of doing something like that? That's, that's way out there. And yet it stays. It exists. It kind of sticks there. It never goes away. Maybe King Uzziah needs to die in your life. What's that all about? Oh, you remember the story? Probably the greatest vision that happens in all the Bibles in Isaiah chapter 6. You know where Isaiah sees the Lord high and lifted up? Remember it? For those of us who are kind of students of the word, you know, I I saw the Lord high and lifted up. The train of his robe fills the temple and and all these these archangels are all over the place and there's a challenge that that here I am, God, send me. And it is this huge thing of, of change and newness that God was about to bring forth. But we forget the very first verse in Isaiah chapter 6 says this. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. What's with that? What's so terrible about this guy, Uzziah? Well, Uzziah was the king for 42 years. I think that there may not have been another time in Israel's history where they had prospered more. Wonderful things had happened. He had, he had conquered so many things. He had created new ideas and innovative ways of, of doing that. And, and sometimes something new doesn't come on the tails of something bad. Sometimes something new comes on the tails of something good. What's the, you, the King Uzziah in your life that, that may have to die in order for God to do the new work that he's wanting to do? You can't hold on to the old and want to receive the new. Sometimes you have to hand over the old in order for God to do that. And I believe that God is continually seeking to do something new in us, stirring us, challenging us, moving us ahead. But the tragedy is that there are many times we say, thanks God, but I'm kind of happy where I'm at now. Sometimes it comes from what I'll call this divine discontentment. Sometimes God works in our consolations, but sometimes he works in our desolation. Sometimes there's something that just angers us and it's God poking us and saying, hey, that's why you're here. I called you to do something like that. I, had a, I have a couple friends that, that are in discussions about the troubles that they are seeing in the church. And one of them is a friend, a dear friend since, since we were in high school. And, and his father was in ministry, saw terrible things happen. He's on the mission field, saw terrible things happen. Uh, was a victim of terrible things that had happened. And, and in that, there was this, this, this 
part of him that seeing all this has the temptation to become embittered. But as he's looking at all these things, he's saying, I see all these things happen, but God has been speaking to my heart and I want to be part of the solution. I don't want to be part of the problem. You see, that's what happens when God begins to speak with godly people. They start to say, okay, I want to be part of the solution. God, I want you to do something through me and I'm not too sure exactly what I can do. And you're left with the decision whether you step into it or whether you resist it. And God challenges us um, with things new so that he keeps us from atrophying in our seats. And he says, I want to do something new in you despite your limitations, despite your weaknesses, despite your last, your failures, despite all the things that are going against you, despite this pandemic. And eventually God says, I'm going to do something new. Are you going to come along? Are you content to hold on to the familiar? Do you want to live off yesterday's manna? Or do you want to receive what's fresh today? But what if? But what if we go and we take this step and God isn't there when we take the step out? What happens if I fail miserably? What happens if if A, B, and C doesn't happen? Will I be able to get to D? Well, maybe the bigger question you need to ask yourself is, there is always going to be Um, a cost. But I think the bigger cost is of saying no. There's a bigger cost of not. You think playing safe is the lesser cost, but really it's the bigger cost. There's a cost of discipleship, but there's a bigger cost to not pursuing discipleship. There's a cost to prayer. There's a cost that happens when you really seek God. But there's a bigger cost to not seeking God. There's a, there's a cost to getting into the Word of God, but there's a bigger cost in not getting into the Word of God. There's, there's a cost in doing the Great Commission. There's a bigger cost in not doing the Great Commission. You're always going to be living with the repercussions of your obedience or your disobedience or your half-obedience. So the question is, or sorry, the question is not, is there a new thing God is doing? The question really is this. What is the new thing that God is calling you to? Because I believe God is. Just based on his nature. Wanting to do something. Now, let me just say something. I don't want to prolong this any longer. Because I've heard this before. Well, you know, God wants me to do a new thing. You know, so I haven't been getting along with my wife. And so he's calling me to something new. No. No. If that's the case, God is calling you to do things different so that your marriage will be saved. You know, you see a group not being ministered into the church. You, you see something in your neighborhood and God all of a sudden begins to pro- prompt you. You're a business owner. You're seeking to be successful for the kingdom of God. And that calling to be a business owner is just as important as a calling for a pastor to pastor a church. I believe that with all of my heart. And God says, this is a way that you can serve your constituents better. This is a way that you can serve your people better. And God begins to speak. There's something to do, to do which is new. And, and that's the question that I have for you today. That's the challenge that I have. You know, we've already kind of been talking, and I mentioned it at the annual business meeting. Hey, what if we tore down this balcony? If we tore down that back wall, made a huge gem so that we could actually serve our community, to convince them that we love them, not with a little piffy social media message, but to actually get our hands dirty. What if? What if we were to do something like that? The most successful ministry is achieved through through starting conversations online. How do we create content online? And I know Pastor Charles and I was kind of the, the goal, the ambition before COVID hit to, to create avenues to do evangelism. That still is the goal because that's where we're seeking to reach and minister and, and win people for the Lord. And, you know, to incorporate the cultures where we're seeing newer cultures coming in. And God is calling us to these new things. And, and you come to the realization that the old methods of evangelism that we did before are not working. So why are we clinging to old methods that aren't working? I have learned something as a leader. That when the horse is dead, dismount. Right? 
And for heaven's sake, don't tie it to another dead horse and thinking that the two are going to revive each other. It's true. It's true that we are living in a world which is vastly different than the world that we grew up in, many of us grew up in. You know, and if you're thinking you're going to still shop at Sears when Amazon is doing everything, you're crazy, right? It is a totally different world that we live in. And God is calling us no longer to be evangelists. God is calling us to be missionaries, to do something different, to do something real, to do something that somehow takes a chance. Well, that sounds like more work, Pastor Mike. Yeah, it does. Sounds like we're going to have to extend ourselves. Yeah, probably. Um, sounds like it might cost us something. Yeah, it probably would. But if you're planning on seeing your grandkids in heaven, if you're planning to see your sons and daughters come to know Jesus, if we do nothing, it will cost us a lot more. So the question is this. What is the new thing that God is calling us to? And we bless Pastor Charles and we say, Pastor Charles, be blessed as God calls you to a new thing. But the challenge also comes to us and says, hey, God's calling you to something new as an individual, as a church, whatever. That's what Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, the most famous uh, verse in the most famous faith chapter says this. Well, faith, it's impossible to please him. So God, I just pray that your hand will be upon us as we are at this precipice, this point, and we're just so thankful for for the fact that you know everything that's going on. And, and there's a challenge that goes out to all of us in this whole thing. A time of blessing, a time of, a time of uh, you know, rejoicing, yet at the same time, a, a time of, well, what do we do now? Well, God, what is taking place? What's, what's the issue? Let us say yes to what you're wanting to do. Let us say yes. And, and, and that's not just a church prayer. That's an individual prayer. Because I believe as I'm speaking this out, there are people that, that know that God has been calling them to something. And they've just been in this precipice of, of saying, well, what do I do? Do I do it or I don't? Do I take a chance or not? Well, look that God is calling you to love us of faith that, that he's never called you to before. And if that's the case, and if that's you, I encourage you to take the step encourage you to choose God. So Father, I just pray that over this congregation. I pray that over Pastor Charles as he goes. And I, I pray, Father, for us as a congregation, Lord, that you will bring about that level of determination and faith and let it rise up, Father, because there's so many people who need to know you and there's so many people who we need to reach. And I pray, God, that you will minister deeply in our congregation and in our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand up. Again, I encourage you afterwards, Pastor Charles and Trish are going to be kind of hanging out at the front uh, altar for those people who just want to shake their hands and say, hey, thanks for your years of ministry. Uh, bless them in that way. Then uh, they'll be here for that. Take advantage of that. Other than that, I'm going to hand things over to Pastor, Pastor Glenn this time.